later. But what if that was really the way Mark intended it to be? Women trembling and fearful who said nothing. Because what if in the life of the church it was a challenge to them? Are you just going to sit there and say nothing? Or are you not going to allow this story to penetrate your heart so much that you run and let the rest of the world know that Jesus is alive? For all of us, we don't want to just sit there in fear and say nothing, but we want to let the world know of a Savior who died, but who also rose again. Amen? Amen. 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 As you're able, let us stand and sing together a songs of joy and a praise.
was filled with his praises. One day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The world became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, greatly forever. One day is coming, a glorious day, a glorious day. Forgive. He lived and 
could sit down, but you won't be sitting for long, but um, whenever I was young, I used to go to vacation Bible school, and we sang this song that was a bit of a competition. Maybe some of you sang it too, that one side sang, hallelujah, 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 and the other side sang, praise yeah, well, praise ye the Lord, which you want to, it's kind of odd, isn't it? But it's, it's the old King James directly from there. So it means you praise the Lord. Hey, but um, so what was this side singing when they sang hallelujah, 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 hallelujah? What does hallelujah mean? Praise the, Lord. the Hebrew word halal means praise. So you're to be praising God. The Psalms, that's all over the place. Praise, give praise. So this side was singing praise the Lord, and this side was singing praise the Lord. Yeah, so you try to be louder, than whichever side was louder won. So as children, we were screaming so loud it would hurt our voices, right? But it's not whether or not you're loud, it's whether or not you really mean it, right? It's the fact that Jesus is alive, we, we should want to celebrate, we should want to pray. So I think we should sing that song having this side be the hallelujah, 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 and then this side be the side. praise the Lord. So if you did it like the way I did it in um, Vacation Bible School, when you sang, you had to stand up when you were singing and then sit down. Some of you, you, you just can't do that with your knees. That's, that's okay. You can just stay where you are. You, you could do it. But after we're done doing it with the singing, we're going to do the wave then too, right? And uh, some people are perfectly comfortable saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that's natural. For other people, it feels weird to them. Maybe it's easier for you to go, woo, 
Woo! So whenever you're doing the wave, you could either yout hallelujah or praise the Lord or, or woo in whatever form it would manifest itself. Okay? So all right, we're, go ahead, ready to, to do the singing. A nice low key, Roger, is that good? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is this side going to stand up? Hallelujah. We'll start again. Start again. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Back to you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Back to you again. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Then everybody says, praise ye the Lord. Which, which side was louder? I don't know. I think, I don't know. We better, we better try it again. And in reverse. Okay, you ready? Start, so you have to start on the side. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. We're going to win. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. And many of you were wising up. You just stood up the whole time, right? So we're going to start wave. Um, we'll do it from this side and, and do it and then go the whole way over and then back again. We'll try to do it twice. You ready? On your mark, get set. Go, woo, hallelujah, and back, and again, woo, amen. We're like the, we're the, we're the breakout here, I don't know what's going on. That's a tough act to follow, but we do have some announcements. First of all, happy Easter to everybody. Thanks for coming out. Happy Easter. He is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. Special thanks to all those who purchased flowers for Easter. A floral list is available if you did not receive one. For those at this service, please leave them in place until after the 1030 service. After the 1030 service, the flowers can be taken with you. And you can also take them from the fellowship hall or the hallway, um, but they have to stay here in the worship center until after the 1030 service. Um, obviously, thank you to Kay Shade for the uh, beautiful pieces of art behind us, right? Just amazing what, what Kay can do with paper yes. <laughs> and paint, right? It's really awesome. Uh, we thank God for her gifts and talents. The next Splash Night for kids, that's coming up tomorrow evening. A free family dinner is at 5.30, and activities will be held from 6 to 7. In addition to Splash Night, picnics in the park, which we had our first one this past week. Yep. We'll continue Tuesday night on Tuesday night at Grove Memorial Park starting at 5.15. Well, please join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, what can we possibly say to thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, but beyond that, for rising and for giving us eternal life, for going to prepare a place for us. As we celebrate Easter, let us remember that Jesus died for you. He died for me. He died for our friends, our families our neighbors, but beyond that, Jesus came to this earth and he lived and he died and he rose for those that we disagree with, for those that we view as, as people who we have um, problems with or our enemies, we view as our enemies. He died for people that we have um, political differences with. Help us know that, Jesus, you came and you lived and you died for everybody. Every person that has lived was on your, your mind and your heart on that day when you died. And then when you rose again three days later, let us, in any way that we can, give glory to you. All praise and glory, glory and honor to you, Lord, now and forever. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The moon 
and stars, they wept. This morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was falling. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. was laid in darkness a battle in the grave the war on death was waged the power of hell forever broken the ground began to shake the stone was rolled away his perfect love
Would you please Would you please rise for the Psalter lesson? It's a responsive reading from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. We'll get there. Perhaps you'll have to read the whole thing, Toby. That's okay. There we go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let all the earth praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all of our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. Something supernatural going on. 
Would you please rise for the epistle reading? The epistle lesson today is from Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. How about that choral anthem? I was thinking we were getting ready to start an episode of the Family Feud, you know, coming up to, that's the music in the background. But good stuff. Well, little Billy was in the Easter program for his church. He was only five years old, and he only had one line to memorize, and it was directly from Scripture. It was Luke 24, 6. He is not here he is risen. Only seven words. And he had it down pat. I mean, he would stand in front of the mirror. He would say his line. He, had it. he would say it to his parents. He would say it to his sibling. No problem whatsoever. But then the day of the program, he had all these people sitting in the pews with their eyes fixed on him. And when it was time for Billy to come and say his line, deer in the headlights. I mean, he couldn't remember where he was. He couldn't remember what he was supposed to do. Couldn't remember what he was supposed to say. I mean, he, he's just stuck. And like any good children's program, they have a prompter, right? And so the prompter was saying, saying the lines to him, he is not here. He is risen. And so little Billy grabs the microphone, smiles, and he says, he is not here. He is in prison. Well, that, that changes the Easter story a little bit there, doesn't it? Yeah. As we gather here, we do not gather to celebrate an incarcerated Savior, right? We come to celebrate a risen Savior. And for some people, they might even think, well, what's that really have to do with me? I mean, some Jewish rabbi who, who died on a cross 2,000 years ago, really, there, there's a disconnect. I mean, some might even look at historical events. Okay, the Hindenburg blew up, but... What's that have to do with me? The, the Titanic sank, but that really doesn't affect my daily life. In 1969, a man walked on the moon, but what's that have to do with me? And some might even look, well, yeah, Jesus' death, what's that have to do with me? Why does it matter? Well, I'm glad you asked, right? Why does the resurrection matter? For one thing, it reminds us how amazingly powerful God is. That God is so powerful, he overcomes death. That's not natural at all, is it? Once you're dead, you are dead. 
but God has power over death. The resurrection also proves that all that Jesus said was true. He declared he was the promised Messiah. He declared he was the savior of the world, the way, the truth, the life. He declared he was resurrection and life. All of those things could no longer be discounted by people because he had victory over death. The resurrection also validates the crucifixion showing that when Jesus laid down his life on Calvary's cross, that death, that shedding of blood was sufficient to cover your sin, my sin, and the sin of the entire world. It proves that yes, that payment was made in full for the salvation of humankind. The resurrection proves that we can be saved. We can be. Some of us were watching Passion of the Christ on Friday evening. And that one thief on the cross is saying, you know, you said you could save others. You, why don't you save yourself and save us? And others are hurling insults at our Lord, right? You said you were the Messiah, right? Come on, coming down from that cross and save us. Well, Jesus could have come down from that cross any moment he wanted to. I mean, he had at his beck and call thousands of angels who could come to minister to his very need. But the unique thing was, if he had saved himself... It wouldn't have saved us. He couldn't save himself and save us simultaneously, and so he chose instead to save us. So we know that through the resurrection, we indeed are saved. We have new life. The resurrection reminds us that we're not here for simply this life only. This is temporary. We're just a passing through, right? That we are made for something more that there is more beyond this life, that we are made for eternity. That's beautiful, isn't it? To think of the words of Bill and Gloria Gaither, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Right, didn't you sing that? Because he lives all fear, fear of death, fear of what you're facing, your struggles in life right now, fear of all your issues, it's gone. Because you know he holds a future. He's the one who is in charge of what is before us. So the resurrection makes a huge difference. See, it really changes the direction of our lives. Knowing that we have new life in Christ, it's it's a game changer for everything. So it's not just some random event in history that happened long ago that doesn't have ramifications for here and now. It's, It's hugely important. And that's why for the church it is such a big day that we are celebrating life. And and oh, I I can't forget that big thing, right? We're no longer just dead, right? All of us have lost loved ones at one time or another. And, And that's one of the most difficult things we have to face. But, huh? If they have placed their faith in Christ, if they know Him as Savior, It's not the end, is it? It's merely the stepping stone to eternity. Because Jesus was victorious over the grave and over death, we too become victorious over the grave. Uh, Amen. Well, have you ever felt just like quitting? You ever been on a sports team and you weren't very good? Like me when I was third string in basketball, I was the best bench warmer out there, right? And sometimes you wonder, well, why am I doing this? Why am I just sitting here and not playing and going to all these practices? And yeah. Or maybe even you've been involved in some kind of dramatic production and there are all of these practices you're having to go to and things over and over again. And I don't want to do this. I just want to quit, right? Or maybe you feel that way with your job. Right? Not a lot of job satisfaction. You, you're putting your time in, and yet it's, it's frustrating. And every bit of your being wants to go and sing that Johnny Paycheck song to your employer. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's a few years back. Take this job and shove it. Right? Um, yeah, you're ready to say that. So some people even want to, well, maybe want to quit in a relationship. Okay, this, this is over. This isn't working enough. Um, some might even want to quit a, a marriage. 
But you know, things in life that are worthwhile take time and intentionality and energy. We need that, don't we? Sometimes I think we live in the great quitting society. Many people just ready to throw in the towel when things get a little hard. But, you know, sometimes it's that way with faith. Some people are ready to, I don't know, if this is really worth it. If that matches you and where you are, then you can resonate with this book of Hebrews. Because we have a number of people who are ready to quit the faith. And why? Because they're under a great deal of persecution. I mean, they could lose their lives at any moment. Someone could come into their house and, and drag them away and put them to death. That was the reality. And for many of them, they want to turn back to what was comfortable for them. And these are Jewish believers. What's natural for them is following the law of Moses. And so we're not sure who the writer of this letter is, but they're going to great lengths to make them realize Jesus is a whole lot better than everything Moses had to offer. Uh, truly, that was a beautiful system, but let me explain to you how Jesus is the fulfillment of that sacrificial system. Let me explain to you how Jesus is the high priest. Let me explain to you how Jesus, when he laid down his life, became that perfect lamb who was slain so that we could be forgiven. And he even goes on to share, because of that sacrifice, we now have this intimate access and connection to God. This portal to heaven has been opened, and so we go not just into heaven one day. No, right now we can go into the Holy of Holies, the most holy place that no one could enter except for that high priest once a year. Suddenly when Christ dies, that massive curtain is ripped in two from top to bottom, proving that complete access to God. And this writer is sharing with people, that's what you have. And in light of that, this is really a letter of encouragement. He's sharing with these people, don't you quit. Don't you give up. Uh, later on, this is the whole beautiful chapter on faith. All these people who by faith, they kept trusting. Even though they couldn't see what was happening, they kept trusting in God. And for each of us, I think we need a little encouragement now and then to keep on going. Don't you quit. You know, this might not be about your life of faith. This might be something that you're facing right now in your life, some, some trial, some issue. God just wants to remind you, hey, hang in there. God wants to remind you, I I'm with you in this. I'm not going to leave you eye and dry. Just keep clinging to me, and I'm going to see you through this process. And, you know, there's a lot of great resources out there of people with stick to -itiveness. Let me read to you a poem by Edgar Allen, Edgar Albert Guest. It's called Don't Quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is strange with twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a fellow turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint to the clouds of doubt. And when you never can tell how close you are, it may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse, you must not quit. No. Keep on going. Don't throw in the towel. Persevere. Maybe you heard of this individual before. He started up a business at age 22. It flopped. He ran for state legislator at the age of 23. He lost. He started up another business at the age of 24. It failed. He was elected to the leg legislator at age 25. His girlfriend died at age 26. He had a nervous breakdown at age 27. He lost when he ran for the, being the speaker. 
He lost when he read, ran for being an elector. He lost when he ran for Congress those years, 29, 31, 34. He was elected to Congress at the age of 37. Ran again for Congress in 39. He lost. Ran for the Senate at age 46. He lost. Ran for Vice President at age 47. He lost. Ran for the Senate at age 49. He lost. Ran for President of the United States at age 51. He won. Who am I talking about? Abraham Lincoln. How different would the United States of America be without an Abraham Lincoln? Huh. He had this focus, and he wasn't distracted from his goal. We're told in this letter to Hebrews to hold on to hope unswervingly. When's the last time you used that word in a sentence, huh? Unswervingly. What's that mean? You're not veering to off into one direction or another. You're, you're just focused on, on what you're doing and where you're going. You are, you're undaunted if you would. One person who is undaunted in history as well was William Wilberforce, an individual in England who was very instrumental in ending the slave trade. He had been to a meeting one night and he was exhausted. He was overwhelmed and he was ready to quit. He decided to pull out his Bible and as he pulled out his Bible, this piece of paper fell to the ground. Picked it up. It was in a letter that John Wesley had written to him right before he died. Here were some of the words. Unless a divine power has raised you up, I see not how you can go through with this glorious enterprise of opposing the abominable practice of slavery, which is a scandal of religion, of England, and of human nature. Unless God raised you up for this very thing, you'll be worn out by their opposition, the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them together stronger than God? Oh, be not weary of well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of his might. Ain't that the way God works? That sometimes you're just ready and out of nowhere comes this letter of encouragement or word spoken to you, and you suddenly realize, oh yeah, I can't do this, but God can. And God's going to help me through it, right? As we walk by faith, we need to be those who are unswerving, not to the right or to the left, but keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, right? We continue to run the race, Part of this letter also says to encourage one another by spurring one another on to love and good works. You ever been a spur to somebody? Now, I'm not th talking about the thing on the back of your boot that you're hitting the horse with, right? No, it's something that's continued to motivating someone else to go forward. We're to be cheerleaders for each other in this journey of faith. And, and as I'm wrapping things up here, let me encourage you, but also challenge you a little bit. Um, first of all, there may be some here who, you know, you're here because it's Easter and you're supposed to be here, but you don't really buy this whole thing. You know, you think it's nice that churches have this celebration in a year, but you're just not sure. I'm glad you're here. And I would encourage you, keep seeking God's face. Man, through the prophet Jeremiah, God declares, you'll Seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So I would challenge you to put some wholehearted effort into, who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Is, it, is this really true? Can you find evidence? Keep seeking. Huh? Now, there are others here who probably could say your, your worship attendance is a bit sporadic. That is, you kind of make it when you can. Now, some would say, well, pastor, I'm too busy to be in worship. I'm too busy for all this Jesus stuff. Maybe someday. Now, I think there are even some folks who maybe kind of think of a walk with Jesus as an extracurricular activity. That you're, you know, this paper represents your life. And your, your life is so full. But whenever it works for you, you just tack a little bit of Jesus onto your life. 
you have a little bit of Jesus, so you think, okay, that can get me into heaven and I'm good to go. Is that what a Christian life looks like? Jesus doesn't want to be tacked on to your life. No, Jesus wants to totally take your life and, and replace it so it's a life for him to, to honor and glorify him through who you are and what you do. And so the, the Christian walk is really handing your whole life over to Jesus. So it's a challenge. Some of you take this seriously, huh? This walk of faith. Don't let it be an extracurricular activity. Allow Jesus to be your life, right? Now, there are some others who maybe you're around about twice a month because, you know, you're busy. Who isn't busy, right? There's just constant stuff going on, but it's prioritization, huh? Now, as you're leaving worship today, the, the greeters who welcome you on your way in are going to be handing you a card, which is inviting you back for our worship series that starts next week. We're going to spend the next eight weeks looking at the book of Acts, which I think is an incredibly cool book. And we think, oh, those apostles, they did so much. Well, no, they're just screw-ups like we are. It's really not Acts of the Apostles, it's Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's what he does in all these believers when they submit themselves to him. And I'm really looking forward to preaching through that. But I would challenge you, are you ready? Are you ready? I challenge you to come to worship all eight weeks. Keep coming back regularly to experience all that God has for you and experience the joy one beautiful thing about Acts is it's such an amazing sense of community that they have. And that's what we're preaching about all year, this need for community, of uh, being together in Christ. Now, there are others of you who maybe you're already here every week and thought, I get the gold star, Pastor, because you always see me. Well, no. For all of us, we've never arrived spiritually, have we? We're we're always a work in progress. And no matter how far you have gone in faith in Christ, you have only scratched the surface of what God has in mind for you. You've only plunged the depths an itty bitty bit. I seem to be quoting country songs too much today, right? Maybe Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin brothers. If you want a cool drink of water, you better dig a little deeper in the well, all right? So a challenge for all, dig a little deeper, go a little deeper. See what God has for you, and you'll find yourself refreshed, not only that you have experienced the true living water, but you're offering that to the rest of the world, right? So that here in this place, we are worshiping passionately, we are loving deeply, and we're transforming lives in Jesus' name. You know, we can't do that if we're just kind of sporadic and kind of into it a little bit, right? Now, we're to be undaunted, we're to be having this boldness in going forth and not swerving, right? Not being distracted by squirrels, right? Not running off, but truly focusing on the one who laid down his life on that cross. Um, well, in closing, the other challenge I'd have for you is if you're not sure you're saved, why don't you do something about that, right? Right? But today we're remembering that Jesus is alive and that he lives in us, but maybe you're not sure that he is living in you. Uh, immediately following this service, there are going to be people here willing to pray with you and for you, um, whether it's that taking a step of salvation, whether it's finding out a little bit more who Jesus is, or whether you have a particular health concern or need, uh, they want to pray for you. That's why we're here to help each other through this process. So whatever it is, let's stick to him. Huh? He is alive. Christ the Lord is risen. May we celebrate that unswervingly. Amen? Amen. 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 Now I understand for our closing song, we may not have the PowerPoint for it. So if you don't know the words, that means you just move your mouth and say watermelon. And no one will ever know, right? Oh, all right. As you're able, let's stand sing together. In Christ alone, my hope is found. 
stand in our own power we stand in his power if you don't believe in miracles go and talk with this family over here about that amazing little baby they're holding who is just unbelievable huh but God's still in the miracle business and doing beautiful amazing things and the beautiful thing is the same power that brought Jesus back from the dead is the power you have available to you through the Holy Spirit to live a, a life of holiness and to walk for him so go forth being undaunted, filled with his joy, filled with his spirit, and taking a message of joy and resurrection into all the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. <laughs>